Hello again, this is John Bush. We were going to call this section fun guns, but <laughs> it dawned on us. Most all guns are fun, but what we're talking about are the guns that are made to look like various submachine guns that are made in the semi-auto. When the craze started, it was prior to 68. Uh, you had guns like the Spitfire and a few others, and they were open bolt. Well, Uncle didn't like open bolts, too easy to convert. So everybody redesigned their guns to be closed bolt. And an early gun is called the Wesco. Now, you can see it wasn't really a copy of anything. They used a lot of off-the-shelf parts to make the gun feasible to build because they only had a garage. They didn't have a factory. So they used Thompson wood. Uh, they cast a, a stin-like mag housing that's sort of like the Australian Austin. Uh, interesting feature, they did have the recoil spring is up in the front area, unlike most of the guns have the spring behind the bolt. The spring you can see through the cocking slot is actually for what's called the hammer. Once the bolt closed, the sear actually released that block, went forward, and it struck the firing pin. There weren't a lot of these guns made. The manual is more common than the gun ever was. Uh, because when they made the print run, they had to print a certain number of copies to get a decent price. So you'll actually see the Wesco manual. It's a small manual, about four by four inches, yellow cover. You'll find those at the gun shows even today, even though the guns just are not around. Now, that gun is in nine millimeter. So now we're going to look at a 45. Now, this is called the Commando Volunteer. The two styles. This is the plastic lower, which used a Thompson mag. The earlier one had a metal aluminum type cast housing that used a grease gun mag. The reason they changed, because early on, grease gun mags were dirt cheap. And then they came out with the Mac and other guns that utilized it. So in order to keep the gun competitive, they made a plastic lower that accepted the Thompson mag. Thompson mag in many ways is a better mag, double column, double feed versus double column single feed, but that required a feed ramp. And what generally goes wrong with these guns is that feed ramp was made out of a black plastic. Uh, plastic. Later, the replacement ones were made out of a polymer. Now you're going to say, ain't hey, polymer plastic? Well, it is, but you know, marketing terms, we got polymer now, and when I was a kid, we had plastic. And those are made out of high molecular weight polymer. Now that sounds even better, but it's slippery and the rounds feed really well. And a lot of these guns that are out there with bad feed ramps, you put the new feed ramp in and they're suddenly brand new again and work great because that new polymer is slick. Now one gun you probably have seen is the Sterling. Now we did a course, armor's course on the full auto. Uh, this basically looks just like a regular Sterling. Obviously, the muzzle sticks out quite a bit further because it's got to be a 16-inch barrel, and it's closed bolt. So when you cock it, the spring has to be much stronger because when you fire this gun, the bolt is not moving. On a subgun, you've got that bolt moving forward. It's heavy. You've got inertia, and that makes it so you can have a lighter spring. So to counteract that on a semi-auto with a closed bolt, you got to have a much stronger spring. I mean, that's the only problem. The guns work great. They're fun. Uh, they're not real expensive, and they're available, and parts are available. Now, a lot of guys are taking other submachine guns, like Berettas, Steyr Solotherns, and what we have here is a check. Now, this one, obviously, it hasn't been quite finished yet because they haven't even finished the barrel, but they've lengthened it to be 16 inches. Now this is a really interesting gun because some say this is what Uzi copied, okay? Now the interesting thing is this is simple, has few parts. The trigger pack on an Uzi has more parts than this whole gun has. But there's a couple of interesting features on this gun. Uh, you know, you've got the safety is right in the trigger pack, so you can easily use it. And what's interesting is, what the heck is that on the side? Oh, that's a great feature. That is the loader, right on the gun where you'd really want to have it. Now, 
when we do another segment, we're going to do a lot on stripper clips, guides, and things like that. Now, on this gun, I'm only putting four rounds, but normally it'd be ten. Put the stripper clip in, the magazine goes right on. Oh, that's quick. That's nice. I like that. But because we got guns here, I'm going to unload this mag just to be on the safe side. But there's only a few guns that have a, a guide like this to load the mags. This gun, the Steyr Solothurn, is about it. You know, they load right on the gun, which is a really great feature. And they're, they're fun. And they're legal. You know, keep it in mind. Put 16-inch barrels, make them semi-auto. You can take any of these 9mm sub guns and make a really fun gun. And again, I guess all guns are fun, but sometimes there's funner. And these are it. And hope to see you next time. This is John Bush saying goodbye.